Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's do this tonight. It's Christmas Eve before Christmas Eve. Amen. Let's all stand. Let's thank our God tonight for another opportunity to lift up his holy name in his sanctuary. Amen. of God, we appreciate you, Lord, this evening. God, as we come this Christmas Eve before Christmas Eve, lift up your holy name, God, in your house, in your sanctuary, always giving you the glory, the praise, the honor, and the glory tonight. Help us, Lord, to look to you, the author and the finisher of our faith, knowing that you always give us the victory, Lord, by your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. Let's turn our song book to page 89. We're going to sing that song, Glory to His Name. Down at the cross where my Savior died. Down where from cleansing from sin I cry. There to my heart was the blood of light. I'm singing glory to His name. I'm singing glory to His name. I'm singing glory to His wonderful name. There to my heart was the blood of I'm singing glory to his name. Verse 2, I'm so wondrously, so wondrously saved from sin. Jesus so sweetly abides within. There at the cross where he took me in. I'm singing glory to his name. I'm singing glory to his name. I'm singing glory to his wonderful name. There to my heart was the blood of I'm singing glory to his Verse 3, oh precious, oh precious fountain that saves from sin I am so glad I have been turned in There Jesus saves me and keeps me clean I'm singing glory to his Alright, come on now I'm singing glory to his name I'm singing glory to his wonderful name. There to my heart was the blood. Glory to his come. Come to this fountain so rich and sweet. Cast thy poor soul at the Savior's feet. Let's plunge in today and be made come. I'm singing glory to his name. All right. I'm singing glory to his name. I'm singing glory to his wonderful name. There to my heart was the blood of pride. I'm singing glory to verse 4 one more time. Come to this fountain so rich and sweet. Cast thy poor soul at the Savior's Let's plunge in today. May it come. I'm singing glory to his name. I'm singing glory to his name. I'm singing glory to his wonderful name. There to my heart was the blood of pride. I'm singing glory to one more time the chorus. I'm singing glory. Hallelujah. I'm singing glory to his wonderful name. There to my heart was the blood of pride. I'm singing glory to. Let's do just that. Let's give him glory tonight. To his holy name tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lamb of God. Lord, for your goodness, your glory. God, all the praises do you tonight. God, there's no sad story tonight, God. Thank you, Lord, for the victory which comes through you tonight, God. Thank you, God, for all that you're continuing to do for your people, your many blessings, God, that you bestowed upon each one of us. God, for Lord, heaven, defeat Satan on the on Calvary's hill. Thank you, God, for spoiling him, God, and giving us the victory, Lord, each and every day as we come before you, Jesus. Thank you tonight, Lord, for your love and your concern for all of us tonight. In Jesus' name, let this church say amen. 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 You may be seated tonight. Amen. I came here with victory on my mind. Amen. I don't have any defeats tonight. You say, well, preacher, how about your back? How about it? 
Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your prayers. I bent down uh, one morning to dry my leg off after a shower, and all of a sudden, back all messed up. I had to walk cricket for one day. But the prayers of the saints. Appreciate each one of you prayer. Your prayers, God has answered your prayer. Came here, Sister uh, Tiffany was coming out. She said, see, I see you uh, uh, got that glide in your stride, Pastor. I said, yep. Got to make it happen. Amen. Amen. We all make it happen for Christ. Amen. When we're here this Christmas Eve before Christmas Eve. <laughs> yes. Amen. It's good to be in the house of God each and every day that the house of the doors are open to the church. Amen. Amen. He said, he, he said, well, Jesus hasn't come yet, but when Jesus comes back, you know, we're going to heaven. I, I don't want to say, well, Jesus, I'm tired of heaven. Let me go over here to the side, sit in this park. <laughs> no, you know, no. I, I want to be able to, to speak with Jesus, go down there, talk to Abraham, and begin yeah. to fellowship with David. All, all the men, are all the up there, hey, I want to fellowship. Hey, well, how did you begin to get out that lion's den? You know what I mean? You, you know, was did you afraid? Yeah. Maybe he'd probably tell us, yeah, we, weren't you afraid when you were there? A time when um, you had to cancel that serve, that Bible study? You had to walk cricket. Remember that? Hey, you saw me that day. Mm -hmm. But I'm thankful tonight for the victory. Amen. Thankful tonight that Jesus Christ has never failed us, never left us. He's always with us until the end of the world. Right. Amen. Sister Wall said something good for the Lord tonight. Amen. The best place to be Amen. is right where you are at oh, right now. Yes, that's right. He said, well, preacher, I don't feel too good. Hey, there, Jesus is here. Amen. Only thing you got to do is call upon the name of the Lord, the Bible says, and thou shalt be saved. Yes. You put whatever you need to be saved from in there. Yes. Amen. 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 Um, pray for those that aren't here tonight. There are those that's, uh, that flew into some hot states. <laughs> Some in Florida, some in Georgia, but I pray for them. You say, well, preacher, didn't you get on a plane? No, nope, we're here in cold Wisconsin. <laughs> cold Wisconsin. Well, at least our, uh, at least our apartment, our, our, our place that we stay in is warm. Amen. Hot, to be honest with you, because we live upstairs and the heat comes up. Anyway. Uh, but, hey, praise God. Okay, I've got one announcement. Um, well, two, a couple, a few announcements. Um, this Saturday, there will not be a prayer meeting or, or visitation here. Uh, this Saturday. Hello? Amen. Just want to make, do, do, did you hear what I said? Can I say a big amen? A big amen. amen. Saturday, no um, uh, a prayer meeting or visitation. But if you, that evening, if you like, um, call call someone. See if they did a ride for church for Sunday morning. Right. Amen. Mm -hmm. Also, we have some refreshments there on the table in the back. Um, Sister Walsh um, put it back there. I don't know what she got, but she got a lot of stuff. But praise God. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Man, so if you like refreshments after this service tonight, just go back and, uh, as we said way back in the day, pig out, yeah. you know, and um, be a blessing to you. Amen. 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 This time we're going to have um, Brother uh, uh, come, Brother Canaan come and help us receive this offering tonight. You give us unto the Lord, and the Lord will richly bless you. And all Christians do pay tithe, cheerfully give in offerings. Brother, could you please pray? Amen.
Thank you for your giving. The Lord will richly bless you. This time we're going to preach the living word of God tonight. Appreciate Sister Samson with the Christmas uh, song there. Sounded pretty good. Going to be reading out of the book of St. Luke chapter 2. St. Luke chapter 2. It's good for all of us to be here tonight. Amen. Amen. Appreciate your faithfulness. Luke chapter 2, beginning to read in verse 25. 25. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. Same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Ghost was upon him. It's it's good that the Bible... uh, Caught that right there, you know, just placed that in there. You know, it could have been any old kind of man, but he said, that, and the Holy Ghost was upon him. Yeah. And it was revealed, verse 26, unto him by the Holy Ghost. Let's just, let's just know right there. You say, man, preacher, just, <laughs> let's just right now, that, that right here, that the Holy Ghost reveals things to you. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. That he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came by the Spirit, verse 27, into the temple. There you go again. He didn't just walk on in the temple. He said he came by the Spirit. Let's just know that the Holy Ghost leads us. Wow. And he came by the Spirit into the temple. It seems like, just throwing all this in there. It seemed like Simeon, he was, <laughs> the Bible says he was, uh, uh, the Holy Ghost was upon him. The Holy Ghost revealed to him. The Holy Ghost led him by the Spirit into the temple. Simeon was a God, God-fearing man, God-like man. Yes. Verse 27, he came by the Spirit into the temple, and when the, parents, when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law, then took, he up, then took he him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those which, at those things which were spoken of him. And Simeon blessed them and said unto Mary his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and rising again of many in Israel, and for a sign which shall be spoken against. Yea, a sword shall pierce through thy own soul also, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. And there was one Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phinuel, Phinuel, of the tribe of Aser. She was of a great age and had lived with an husband seventy, excuse me, seven years from her virginity. And she was a widow of about fourscore and four years, which departed not from the people excuse me, from the temple, but serve God with fastings and prayers day and night, night and day. And she coming in that instant gave thanks likewise unto the Lord, spake of him to all them that looked for redemption in Jerusalem. And when they had performed all things according to the law of the Lord, they returned into Galilee to their own city, Nazareth. Now, I'd like to draw your attention to verse 25 there, which reads one more time. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Ghost was upon him. I like to preach with the help of the Lord on a thought. What are you expecting for Christmas? What are you expecting for Christmas? Are you going to have to pray, preacher? Sister Laura, could you stand and pray for the message tonight? Yeah. 
came and I said, we are in your prison. We don't yes. want to be the same way we came here. We want to be transformed by the renew of, of our, our mind. Yes. Lord, please come and touch us. Yes. And please touch us in your hand, Lord. Yes. Put your word in his tongue so, and in his mouth so he can speak to us. Yes. Thank you for hearing us. Amen. Appreciate that prayer, sister. What are you expecting for Christmas? Christmas is often associated with expecting and waiting. The kids are waiting. This time of year, young and old alike are expecting something. They're expecting for someone to visit them. They're expecting for someone to give to them. Or receive something for someone else or someone close to them. Let me ask you a question, as we already shared. What are you expecting for Christmas? Were you longing for anything? What were you expecting or what are you expecting to receive? Saturday. <laughs> Stay Christmas. Were you looking forward to anything special? In the Gospel of Luke, we come across these two characters. One is a man by the name of Simeon. The other is a woman by the name of Anna. Uh -huh. They don't appear in any nat nativity scenes anywhere or, any, uh, or, or on any Christmas cards. But they are significant people in this first Christmas story. Both of these individuals were expecting or waiting for something. Actually, they were waiting for someone. Luke's, uh, Luke's gospel uses a Greek word of anticipation that identifies them as waiting with expectation for the coming of the Messiah or the Savior. It literally means that they were alert to his appearance and ready to welcome him. We see this word in Luke chapter 2 and verse 25 in reference to Simeon where we read that he was waiting. And in uh, chapter 2 verse 38 to describe this woman named Anna who was looking forward to. Simeon was waiting for comfort. In Luke chapter 2 verse 25 it says, and behold. There was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. The same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Ghost was upon him. There weren't good things going on back then in the nation of Israel. They hadn't heard from God for many years and were under Roman rule. It seems like they were always uh, under Roman rule. It seems like they just couldn't get their foot out of Roman rule. They had lost their political independence and were living in fear of King Herod. And many were wondering if the Messiah would ever come. Verse 26 shows us that Simeon had been uh, had good reason for his hope and his anticipation. In Luke chapter 2 and verse 26 it says, and it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost. You know, I like when it says by the Holy Ghost was revealed. I like when I read in the Bible where it says something was revealed by the Holy Ghost. It lets me know that God was on the scene. It lets me know that God's hand was all in it. That he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Simeon's expectation focused on the comfort that Christ would bring. Among Jews of Simeon's day, one of the popular titles of the Messiah was the Comforter. They were longing for the Messiah to come and bring his comfort to them. I'm sure tonight uh, that each one of us have come to this, at this church house tonight to find comfort. He said, well, preacher, I could have found comfort in my comforter on my bed. Oh, no, I'm not talking about that type of comfort. I'm talking about the comfort that comes within your heart and within your life. Uh, only Jesus can give each one of us that comfort tonight. The desire to be comforted is a universal human need. We all struggle with loneliness. We all struggle with emptiness. We all struggle with insecurity and even desperation. 
In fact, the Christmas season is one of the major times of the year for depression and suicide. Holy Ghost prompts Simeon to go to the temple courts at just the right time on just the right day that Joseph and Mary was bringing that little infant Jesus into the temple. What a coincidence. I don't believe in coincidences. When Simeon looked at that baby Jesus, he knew that God's promise had been kept. Here was Emmanuel, God be with us, to make everything right, to provide significance by his presence, and to eliminate rejection, fear, and loneliness. Verse 28 of Luke chapter 2 says that Simeon reached down and took the baby Jesus uh, um, out of Mary's arms and began to praise God. Parents, how would you feel if some old man came up to you, took your infant in his arms and started praising God? How would you feel if somebody came, parents, that came down there and began to say, hmm, give me that baby here. God, I thank you, Lord. I'm sure this was kind of unsettling for Joseph and Mary. But Simeon didn't look all that dangerous. As he broke out into praise, he began to acknowledge that God had not only fulfilled the individual promise to himself, but also the promises of the prophets to send the anointed one to comfort both the Jews and the Gentiles. Also, the other person waiting with anticipation was Anna. Was Anna. After her husband had died, she had dedicated herself to fasting and praying in the temple. In fact, the Bible says that she never left the temple, but worshipped day and night. She was looking forward to the same person as Simeon was, but with a different orientation. Instead of looking for comfort, Anna was looking for forgiveness. Luke chapter 2 and verse 38 reads, And she, coming in that instant, gave thanks likewise unto the Lord. And spake of them to all them that looked for redemption. For redemption there in Jerusalem. The word redemption is related to the idea of captivity. The Old Testament Passover and the release of Israel from Egyptian slavery stood in Anna's day as the ultimate redemption and the symbol of God's power to release captives. Just preach that Sunday preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind to set at liberty them that are bruised. That's our Jesus. Ultimately, Passover pointed ahead to that day when God would provide deliverance from the slavery of sin. When Anna saw Jesus, she gave thanks to God and spoke of him to all who were waiting for redemption. Here at last was the one who would save his people from their sins. When Jesus came, he provided the very things that Simeon and Anna were waiting for. God's comfort and God's forgiveness. There are some in this world who can identify with Simeon. Some people are really hurting right now. They feel lonely. They feel empty. They feel afraid and maxed out. It seems like the world has all this pressure upon them. We talked to someone tonight that began to call us and asking for help. And as we begin to reach our hand of love out to that person, they begin to cry on the phone. They begin to be all crying on the phone and I begin to say, it'll be all right. Jesus knows. You know something? Jesus knows. I'm here to let men and women know tonight that Jesus cares. He begins to care. His hands is outstretched to individuals when they begin to call upon the name of the Lord. The Bible says they that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You know, tonight, I'm not ashamed to cry out to God. I'm not ashamed to begin to say, Lord, I need deliverance. I need you, Lord. Amen. We need you. Let me ask you a question tonight. What are you waiting for for Christmas? Whatever it is, Jesus can give it to you. He said, well, preacher, I've been waiting for this uh, brand new car. I'm not talking about that. Preacher, I've been waiting uh, uh, for that bank account to begin big, big, bigger. I'm not talking about that either. Uh, preacher, I've been waiting uh, for that new job uh, or that new husband or wife. Uh, preacher, I've been waiting, waiting, waiting. I'm not talking about those things either. 
Many need comfort. Some consoling. Some need a fresh sense of God's presence. People can find that what they're looking for is always in Jesus Christ. It's not in a man. It's not in a woman. It's not in the things of the world. But it is in Jesus Christ. Not Hare Krishna. Not any other religion or any other prophet. Jesus was more than a prophet. He was the son of the living God. He came to console each one of us right now where we are at. Well, some can identify with Anna. Some are plagued with guilt that this Christmas, because of something they've done or the way that they've been living, they feel like they're trapped in a pattern of sin that they can't break. It seems that they go up and down and all around it. It seems that they just can't get out the rat hole or the rat circle or what you want to call it. Only Jesus can take his hand of love and take you out of that thing and place you on a solid rock because he is the solid rock. There's nothing that can take a man or woman out of the hands of Jesus Christ. There's nothing that can stop. I always say this. There's nothing that can stop a child of the king. Why? Because the king is not only on their side, but the king lives within them. The king is always there. Huh? You say, well, what if I'm a woman preacher? Huh? The king is always there in that woman, huh? in that man. Huh? The king is there huh? to begin to show them the way. Huh? Just like the Bible says huh? that Simeon, huh? he was full of the Holy Ghost. Huh? Simeon was guided by the Holy Ghost. Huh? Simeon, the, the Bible says that the Holy Ghost revealed things to Simeon. Huh? You know something? Huh? I want a walk like Simeon. Huh? I want the Holy Ghost huh? to reveal to me, huh? to guide me, huh? order my steps huh? as I begin to call upon his holy name. Jesus gives forgiveness. This is the best time of the year for anyone to ask Christ into their heart and life. There are three actions that's in this chapter that I want to begin to bring out tonight. That was just the introduction. The man preached, I remember one prize he was preaching for, I always said, okay, point one. I said, man, the service is supposed to be over. <laughs> Three things I want to bring out tonight. Become a marveler. A marveler. When Joseph and Mary tried to process, process everything that was going on uh, uh, that night, verse 33 says that they marveled at what was said about their son called Jesus. Verse 33, Luke chapter 2 says, and Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken Hallelujah. of him. According to the dictionary, to become a marveler is to be filled with wonder, astonishment, yes. and surprise. Are you a marveler tonight? Hallelujah. Hello? Amen. Or are you too caught up in the busyness and stress of the season? Preacher, you just don't know what's going on. I got to get this for my kid. I got to get that for my kid. Make sure they got Jesus. Amen. Have you been running around because of the holidays? Or are you taking the time to make Christmas a holy day? Amen. Hello? Yeah. Okay. Have you heard the Christmas story so much that it no longer marvels you? Mm -hmm. Actually, this can be a dangerous time of the year for a lot of people. Yeah. Our society, society's celebration of Christmas can immunize us to reality. We hear just enough of the Christmas story each year to inoculate us against the real thing so that we never really catch the true Christmas meaning. What is Christmas all about, preacher? If your kids are crying or if children are crying out there because they're not receiving something for Christmas, they don't know the true meaning of Christmas. And it's up to that one that's in charge of those children that let them know the true meaning of Christmas is that Christ was born. In order for true Christmas spirit to continue correctly in the hearts of God's people, we need the one who is all about in our hearts. Christmas spirit can last not only for Christmas, but through the whole year. 
We just don't serve God just on Christmas. We just don't give to individuals just on Christmas. We don't just come to church just on Christmas and Easter. We don't just uh, begin, you know, sometimes people leave their, uh, their uh, uh, umbrella there on Easter and we got to give it back to them on Christmas Day. Man, preacher. But we serve the Lord's Christ every single day. Even when we're not in the house of God, we're serving the Lord. Even though we may not be in God's house, the Bible states that this thing right here called our temple is the temple of Almighty God. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. What does that mean, preacher? Because he said, I'll always be with you. When you invite Christ in, he's there. He, may, he makes his abode with you. That's what Revelation chapter 3 says. If any man will uh, answer that knock on that door, he said, I'll come in to him and I will be. He'll sup with them. He'll make his abode with you. Wherever you go, Jesus is there. <laughs> I wonder why I said that. thought about this old commercial that I remember. Wherever you go, sweet and low. <laughs> it's an old commercial right there. But wherever you go, Jesus is there. Also, other than becoming a marveler, become a mover. A mover. Take a look at verses 27 and 38 there in Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2, verse 27, it says, And he came by the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law. And verse 38 says, And she coming in that instant gave thanks likewise unto the Lord, spake of him to all them that looked for redemption in Jerusalem. Both Simeon and Anna were movers. When the Holy Spirit prompted them to move, they didn't just sit still. I wonder what would have happened if they had not responded. People can't stay neutral about Jesus. They are either for him or against him. Jesus said either you're hot or you're cold. They are either moving closer to him or farther away from him. You can't be neutral. Well, you know, you know, Jesus is a good dude, you know, whatever. Um, I love him too, you know, whatever. No, you either for him or against him. You either have the son or you don't have the son. You got to be a mover. I hurt my back. Could have called in and said, hey, can't come to work. Can't walk straight. What would you do, Pastor Walter? Did you just lay it down and tell your wife, oh, honey, help me, honey? No. She says, Walter, they say nothing. She didn't say, why don't you stay home today, honey? She didn't say that. <laughs> nope. Matter of fact, she was at that door, opening the door. <laughs> no, she, I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> she was like that. She was not like that. <laughs> Yeah, I like the joke of Sister Walsh. She wasn't like that. No, she wasn't like that. Sister Walsh, you know I'm just kidding. Okay? No, she was praying for me. She was praying for me and went out, crooked back, and got back home that day and and um, just rested a little bit. She asked me, Sister Walsh, she's a great nurse. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Walsh, for everything that you do. She's tough, too. Get your behind out that bed and go to work. She, she has never said that. She has never said that, just to let you know. But I like to keep with this walls. Also, other than a marveler, other than a mover, the last thing I want to share tonight is to be a messenger. As we work at becoming marvelers, we can't help but become movers. That leads us to this final step here as a messenger. Verse 38 reads, And she coming in that instant gave thanks likewise unto the Lord and spake of him to all them that looked for redemption in Jerusalem. Do you have family and friends who've been caught up in the preparations for Christmas? Look at it this way. Maybe their anticipation and longings really represent 
an inner search for comfort and forgiveness. Those things that only the Messiah can provide. God wants each one of us to become messengers of the Christmas story. As you and I become marvelous, the wonder of Christmas will astonish us. It's because Jesus always astonishes. Jesus always gets our attention. Sometimes people don't understand when God gets their attention because they're so amazed and astonished. How did he know this? What, why is this happening in my life? Sometimes people take the things that's bad in their lives and begin to say, oh, the devil's trying to destroy me. But God is trying to draw you closer to him. Sometimes things that happen in our lives, the devil sits on the side and say, why are they blaming me? But God is the one that draws many women by spirit. And sometimes people, people do not listen and take heed to what the Lord is doing. So the Lord has to do something to get their attention so that they can look to him. So how you know, preacher? I've been there. I've been there. That's why I could preach like I'm preaching. God had to stop you in your tracks. <laughs> What's, what's going on? Now, if something happens like that in my life, I look and say, what's going on, Lord? What are you trying to tell me? Yes. Hello? That's right. Then as we become movers, our needs for comfort and forgiveness, they will always be met. And as we take our role as messengers seriously, we'll be in a position to introduce others to the Christ of Christmas. So that in turn can find what they have been waiting for. What are you waiting for? Are you waiting for Christmas to open that present? Well, preacher, I don't have too many presents on the tree. You have a present in your heart right now. And his name is Jesus. You know, if a child is crying, just think about this. If a tr child starts crying because they did not get a present, take them under your wing and say, little one, Jesus is in your heart. He'll give you the desire of your heart. Let us pray. Little one, I pray that Jesus helps you. In a nutshell, Christmas is a marvelous, moving message how can we not find what we're looking for not only all through the year but especially at this time of year sometimes they want to x jesus out of the christmas season xmas don't want christ nowhere around there's no more room for him in the end I'm throw an x on that thing don't want to say merry christmas but Happy holidays. But don't be ashamed. Merry Christmas. Have a Merry Christmas. Not Xmas, but Christmas. How can we keep quiet about it? Once you have the sun, you have everything. You gave that illustration about that old gentleman that died. And he had a picture painted of his son. And so he had the, all these Van Goghs in his house and all these uh, uh, expensive paintings in his house. And as the man died, they was auctioning off all these pictures. And so the auctioneer said, as shared in his will, the owner said that the first picture that's going to be auctioned off is the son, is a picture of his son. And people were all upset. Come on, bring up the, the, the Van Goghs. Come on. We don't want that picture of that old guy's son. And so, no, we have to do it. Uh -huh. So they said, who takes a bid? $10. No one else bid it. So someone bought the picture of the son for 10 bucks. And the guy hit the, bed, the gavel down. So to this gentleman right here. And all the crowds say, great, let's get on to the most expensive uh, 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 pictures. And the guy hit the gavel again. 
the auction has ended. What? And it's been shared that the owner said whoever bought the, bought the picture of the sun bought everything. Whoever has the sun has it all. Tonight, each one of you claim to have the sun in your life. Begin to believe that you have it all. Let us bow our heads in prayer tonight. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. The same man was just a devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Ghost was upon him. Heavenly Father, we are thankful tonight for this time of year. This Christmas season time of year. Knowing God that we celebrate you daily. God, this is the day, Lord, these days around this time. Lord, that people are searching. People are sad. There's something missing in their heart and their lives. Lord, I ask tonight, God, that you would fill it. Lord, fill it with your spirit. Fill it with your love, God, and your concern. Fill your hearts, God. Lord, with all your mercy and grace, let them know, God, that you continually care because you careth for all of us here. Help them, Lord, to know that the reason for the season is for you, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, the Father, for sending your Son to die not only to die on a cross, but Lord, to be born in a manger. Thank you for all that you're doing in our hearts, God. We praise your holy name, God, tonight. We lift up your name, Lord. For your name is above all names on this earth, God. No other name is given among men whereby we must be saved. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All that you're doing within our hearts and our lives. Let's all find a place to pray tonight. Spend a season of prayer at the altar, at your seat, wherever the Lord lays upon your heart tonight. Follow the Holy Spirit.
Let's all bow our heads tonight, close our eyes as Brother John Wright closes in prayer tonight. Amen and amen. amen. God bless you. Amen. Is our prayer. Hallelujah. And remember, Jesus is the definite reason for this season. Hallelujah. God bless you.